Hey guys, welcome back to the sports sermon for our second episode of the day with the trade rumors. I'm pretty sure you all know I'm very depressed. My favorite player got traded today, and so we have come to discuss it. I'm here with Zach and Dylan. I'll let you guys talk about it first. Dylan and Zach, what do you think about the D'Angelo Russell trade? Obviously, the Lakers cannot afford Paul George right now with the two terrible contracts of Lou Alden and Timothy Mozgov, so they had to dump one of them. So this is what they did right here. Um, obviously, I would have liked for the Lakers to get more back for D'Lo, um, but they did get Brooke Lopez, and I think what they were thinking is that they were trying to get set up for Paul George and LeBron James, and I feel like um, with this new team, they have their potential to win more games, maybe. And I would entice LeBron to um, possibly leave Cleveland and uh, go to the Lakers. Uh, for me, I have to say that the Nets easily won this trade. For the Lakers, I think if you really think that Paul George and LeBron James are going to come to L.A., that's fantastic, and this move is great. They needed to get rid of Moscow. But I don't think LeBron is going to end up going to the Lakers. Paul George will, but not LeBron, and really just makes no sense. D'Angelo Russell was a guy that could grow along with Paul George and be one of the Lakers' best players. He could move over to the two when Lonzo came and really could be another guy to help score and be part of the Lakers' future. But instead, they have a one- or two-year rental for Brooke Lopez. Yeah. So, my reaction... Initially, I was very upset. As of right now, I'm still very upset. But if more of an analysis pick instead of a heart pick, um, I don't know. I think it makes sense for both teams in the long run. For the Lakers, they need to clear cap. And if this was the only way they could get Mozgov gone, then it makes sense. Because that was a priority, especially if they want to get a deal done for Paul George by Thursday. And for the Nets, it's kind of like the perfect trade for the Nets. Because they're able to get a young guy with lots of potential and really have some start some start of a future, but also you're gonna have to take on a contract which that's not really a big deal for them. So like at, for a rebuilding team without lots of prospects, it makes sense for the Nets. So I think that was like an A grade if I had to grade them. Great player in D or potential great player in D Lo and a contract that you just knew you're gonna have to get with a young guy. For the Lakers I don't know. The only reason I'm really not happy is because he's one, my favorite player, and two, why not wait till next year and do this if you're like, if you're not going to trade for Paul George and you're just trying to get him more pieces. Not that that's what they're doing, but if that's how it ends up going, I'll just really question why we couldn't have done that next year instead of waiting and um, giving giving up D'Angelo Russell with really no point, no one else to help him in the guard back in the ba guard backcourt. We're now bringing Lonzo in. I mean, if you guys remember, like, this past month, oh, the whole talk has been, does Lonzo fit with D'Angelo? It hasn't been, does he fit with Brandon Ingram? It hasn't been, does he fit with Julius Randle? It's been D'Angelo. So now that he's gone, I just, like, I mean, I was talking to some, I forget who, it was, like, a Laker guy on Twitter, and I was like, please tell me this starting shooting guard is going to be in there. Like, uh, like, we just don't know who's going to play the two now. Because, like, yeah, we have Jordan Clarkson, but he's not a starting shooting guard in the league. I think he's a good sixth man. David Nawaba is not going to start for us. Like, there's just a big hole at shooting guard now. But if they re like you guys said, if it's going to be Paul George and LeBron, then I guess it makes sense. I just still am not very happy that my favorite player is no longer a Laker. But well, Paul George and LeBron both go to the Lakers. It's a hundred percent worth it. That was a great decision. But I don't. Also, I I, I agree it was what? worth it. But there's no need to give up D'Lo to make that decision. Cut Timothy Mozgov and stretch his contact his contract out for five years. There's no reason to give up D'Lo. You can have Paul George and LeBron and keep D'Angelo Russell. Clarkson, I think, is a different story because he has an expensive contract. D'Angelo Russell didn't have an expensive contract. Yeah, I think they cut him. I don't think they should on this trade. But um, what I think is funny is that the the one trade that was not rumored at all to happen happened. And, like, the ones that are rumored to happen don't usually happen. I think it's pretty funny. I mean, 
Last night at like 10 o'clock Eastern time, alert came out that Chad Ford said the Lakers were shopping D'Lo for a lottery pick. And then like on Twitter, every like Laker account was like, Ford has no plug in the Lakers, don't buy it, it seems like speculation. And then this morning, really nothing was going on. It was just kind of like, Ford, you're an idiot. And then, literally, as I'm in the car driving, I got the update. So, yeah, like you said, it wasn't really, like, a big for multiple days talked about. It was just, like, this one little blurb, and I don't know. But I think we both, I think we all agree that the Nets won the trade, as of right now, at least. Yeah, for me, I just think it's a great move for the Nets. I mean... They're taking a contract in Tennessee and Moscow that, like, they're not going to sign any big free agents in the next three years. And D'Angelo Russell really gives them something to start building around. They literally had nothing to build around. Yeah. Besides Brooke Lopez, probably going to leave. And, I mean, is old. He's never going to be good when the Nets are good. But now they have D'Angelo Russell, something to build around. And D'Angelo Russell might drop 30 a game next season. There's yeah. just no one around. I think yeah, I think it adds excitement to the natural organization for their fans if they have any left after that triple trip with Celtics. Yeah, I think for D'Angelo, I think it's a great trade for him because since he got drafted, no one really gave him a chance in Los Angeles, especially after the whole Nick Young thing. A lot of fans just seem to give up on him. And now he's the guy in Brooklyn, so he gets to have the ball a lot, gets to be the guy, and have a lot less pressure. Kenny Atkinson's a good coach for a young guy. I like it for D'Angelo Russell. And yeah, the Nets really only have him and Rondé Hollis Jefferson to build around. But at least now they've got a point guard, their point guard of the future. And yeah, I don't know. I think it was a good trade for the Nets for sure. But what does this mean going forward for both teams? Nets, you finally have something to build on. But for the Lakers, I think that's really where the question is: What does this mean going forward? Because it's not like Paul George is a, or Paul George is a guarantee. Like, yeah, he said he wants to come in for agency, but this whole rental thing could scare him away. Or if he comes in for agency, then what does that mean? He still doesn't play the two. Like, what does that mean? Like, assuming LeBron doesn't come, what's that mean for the Lakers' future? I don't know. I mean, there's nothing really if LeBron doesn't come. I mean, I guess trying to build around that same core with Lonzo, uh, Brandon Ingram, Larry Nance, Zubac. Uh, I mean, I, I'm it's just one less guy in the Lakers equation. I mean, you do have Brooke Lopez, but he'll be the gone. He resigned. Yeah. Decent deal. Yeah, I think the way I look at this trade for the Lakers, it was you get to dump fifty six million for Paul George, you get rid of a guy that the front office was never really big on. And you get an expiring contract, but a guy that'll put up points to keep point to keep the offense rolling this year. That's kind of how I looked at it. But I mean, if yeah. we, I mean, if we don't know the future though, then I guess the question is like, wh- how does this affect the Paul George thing? Like, does Paul George still want to come? Because I know a big thing was that Paul George, D'Angelo Russell, and, Ju- and Julius Randle all share the same agent. Now one of them's in Brooklyn. Randle's sounds like he's gonna be the one that goes to Indiana if Paul George gets traded, like, from an agent perspective, he's not, he's got to be not happy. I don't know, like, do you think that has any effect on Paul George, or do you think he still gets traded and all that? Well, and, um, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I think Paul George, still like, the number one on his list is the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, but as I said earlier in the day, before this whole this trade happened, I said that the Lakers should actually be worried about if Paul George go, potentially goes to the Cavs and LeBron, you know, they could win a championship even with him, and that could potentially stay long term. Or even the Clippers, I heard a lot about that. Um, if I don't think that would happen, but if they could somehow uh, break through and uh, win a championship, that, that could um, convince him to stay with the Clippers. So I I did say earlier that they, I think they needed to trade D'Angelo Russell um, for Paul George, which I think the Pacers would definitely do. So, um, how does it affect PG? I think the Lakers are still number one on, the, on, the, on his list. I still think he'll leave after next year. Um, I actually think that the Lakers will trade for Paul George in the next like one or two days. So, um, maybe Paul George, this isn't a deal that we wanted to see, but I still think he'll go to the Lakers. Yeah, I don't think it affects really too much. I mean, I still think he's the Lakers are number one for him. It may make him question a little bit but I don't see 
this deal really swaying his decision too much. Really? I don't know. Like, I think even if he stays in Indiana as a free agent, why would you want to come to L.A. now that their leading scorer is done? Like, I get that he has those ties there. And, like, trust me, if it was me, I'd go to Los Angeles in a heartbeat. But, like, I feel like from a step, like, if you step back, you look at the front office, the front office just traded your best player, right? Like, at least your best player right now. Maybe not the highest potential, but your best player right now for a center that's on a one-year deal and the pick before them. Like, I just feel like that's got to, like, raise an, um, have him raise an eyebrow. Like, um, what are you doing up there? And it just, like, I don't know. It's, it honestly scares me as a fan. Like, if you're willing to give up our best player for a one-year center that's average, maybe better than average, what does that mean for the other players if they don't like if Brandon Ingram doesn't develop next year like the way they want him to? We're we gonna get rid of him too. I don't know. I just think like as a fan and like even from Paul George, who's kind of like a fan of the Lakers, I'm a little bit hesitant to think why would I want to go there now if they're just gonna ship out these guys for basically nothing. Yeah, this is a yeah. huge L for the Lakers front office because they basically just you know they paid Timothy Mosgrove all this money and you know signed him at twelve oh one a.m. And now they lose their best player just to get rid of his contract. I, it took a huge though. And the pro- biggest problem with that L is that this is Palenka and Magic's first move. This is their first big move. Yeah, that's concerning. Exactly. Like I like trust me. When they got hired, I was like, I love Palenka, I love Magic, but this is your first move. I'm a little bit worried now. Exactly. Like because you said they took such an L. Like the Moskov thing, you can't blame they for, them for. That was cup check and bust. Whatever. Trading D'Angelo Russell. When you could have probably gotten away with Clarkson, that concerns me. Yeah, and also I watched Colin Coward the other day, um, and he was talking about um, Magic Johnson's previous tweets, uh, like from years ago. Yeah, and he was wrong on all of them. He was saying, "Oh, Jim Fredette going ten, nine teams made a mistake. Um, he'll be a star in the NBA," and was like, um, among others. He was saying how, oh, um, a bunch of these uh, draftees will be great and they all try to be bust. And Colin Coward was saying, shouldn't that be concerning for Lakers fans that, like, like their new leader, one of the leaders in the front office, is um, wrong on almost all these draft picks? I don't know. For me, I'm not worried about that purely just because we have scouts to do that. It's not like Magic's the one that's making the decision. We've got scouts. We have a GM. Like, he's not the only guy making the decision. Yes, that he's gotten. Yeah, I agree. Some... Like, if he's watching those as a fan, really. I don't think like he hasn't done his full scouting on all of those players. Exactly. And like you said, the scouts too. I don't think that's a huge concern. The bigger concern for me is D'Angelo. The fact that we just traded him for a 29-year-old center on a one-year deal that's better than average but not great is very concerning for my future as like for the future of the Lakers because now these young guys better be. If I'm a young guy, I'm thinking. All right, if I don't play up to what I'm supposed to do in one year, I could be gone. Yes, I get that they didn't draft him, and that's kind of what I've been hearing a lot. Is like the Magic didn't draft him; it's not his guy. Whatever. I still, I don't know. I'm just worried as a Laker fan now of what's to come. These next two days until draft day are going to be very stressful and very hectic for Laker fans. But speaking of the Lakers and craziness and hectic, um. A new guy got traded tonight, and that would be Dwight Howard, former Laker, who I'm very glad is out of the Lakers organization. He got traded for basically nothing. It was Plumley. It was like the worst Plumley brother, Marco Bellinelli, and a higher pick traded for a lower pick and Dwight Howard. So, really, what was your guys' reaction on that? It seemed like the Hawks just got ripped off a little bit I mean a lower pick Miles Plumley, who averaged two and a half points last year and Marco Bellinelli I mean it seems like a salary dump but I really don't know what for for the Hawks yeah I agree like I was looking at it and like okay is it a salary dump is it a tank but you're getting back Bellinelli who's 30 something Plumley, who's got no potential like it didn't make sense if it was a tank move and a salary dump it's not like they're going to be tight on salary like Millsap's leaving too I was really confused yeah, I think that, um, like, the Hornets, a lot of people thought that before uh, Dwight Howard's time with the Rockets that he'd be a good fit on the Hornets. So, um, I mean, if the Hornets know how to use Dwight Howard, um, it's a great trade for him. I just, 
I do not like Dwight Howard at all. I'm a hater. I'm with you. I feel that. I think he's ir- I think he's irrelevant, honestly. Um, I don't like his attitude. He um he doesn't um he doesn't allow a team to play fast. Um, you know, can't really shoot, so I I don't like him at all. My I didn't big- use him. My biggest. I don't hate the fit on the Hornets, though. I mean, yeah. it's not like the team's gonna play extremely fast with Kemba Walker. It's a Nicholas good Tatum. fit on the Hornets, because I mean, if you remember, four, three or four years ago, Al Jefferson, when he was playing well, the Hornets were playing well with Kemba and all of them. Same thing when Hibbert for a few weeks, when he was playing kind of well for the Hornets, they were looking good. Like, really, if they can get Howard to be even a slim. Like a little bit of himself in Orlando, it could be a steal. But like Zach said, I hate Dwight Howard. I just think his biggest issue is he wants to be the great, the best player on the team, but isn't okay to lose when being the best player on the team. He wants to win and be the best player on his team, and he could do that in two thousand eight, but he can't anymore. He hasn't accepted that, and that's my biggest issue with Dwight. Yeah, and he's thirty one years old, and he drove out the you know Magic head coach and. Just a drama queen. So I don't, don't like him at all. Yeah, but actually, now I I just pulled up the salaries for Miles Plumley and uh, Marco Bellinelli, and the Hawks got even more ripped off than I thought. Miles Plumley gets paid twelve and a half million <laughs> for the next three years, and he averages two point five points a game. What He's Howard average last year? Years old. What did Howard Dwight average? Howard's, I think twenty three million a year. No, what he average stat wise. All right, while you pull that up, Zach, do you think there's any major – do you think the Hornets now are contending for, like, the three or four seed in the East because of this trade? Or, like, do you – like like you said, do you think he's irrelevant and won't make much of a difference? I think he's totally irrelevant. I don't – obviously, like, you know, Kemba, but I don't think it makes a difference at all. Um, I mean, that's the short answer. I don't think it makes much of a difference. Did the Hornets make the playoffs this year? No, they didn't this year. Yeah, that's surprising. I feel like – I mean, I think – Dwight Howard averaged thirteen and a half points, twelve point seven rebounds last year. That's not bad. So I think the difference in production and the higher pick, I think the Hornets definitely got the better side of the steal. Yeah, I think the Horn. I think this trade, the only impact would be that it'll put him into the playoffs, assuming he stays healthy. I think the Hornets will make the playoffs next year because they've got what pick now? Fourteen? No, that's the Heat. Thirty. Thirty-one. And do they have a first-round pick? Do the Hornets not have a first-round pick? Maybe, I don't know. I don't think they do, actually. I think you're right. Um, yeah, so they get an upgrade on their pick. Yeah, they got it. So they all, have, they, all they have is Batum and Kemba and yeah. Cody Zeller. I mean, but at 31, you can get a solid two. They do have the 11th pick, actually. The Hornets do have the 11th pick? Right about that. Oh, yeah, the 11th yeah. pick. Yeah, they make a Zach Collins pick. Yeah, so I'm thinking if you can get somebody to play consistently at the two, so if Monk falls to 11 or Kennard or Mitchell... <laughs> You better be grabbing them so fast. And then... Yeah, that, ba- that basically takes Zach Collins off the board. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So I'm thinking you go Monk, Mitchell, or Kennard at 11. And then at pick 31, you look for a 3 or a shooting 5, in my opinion. Like, you look at, like, a lighting... Shooting 5? Like, someone that's still big enough but can also extend his game. Like, he, like, he doesn't... Not a stretch four, I don't know, because they have Kaminsky and they have, I, I don't think they need another one of those. I think someone that's like a five but can extend, like like a Brooke Lopez where he plays the five but he can also like step out and hit the three. Something like that. I don't know who that would be. Maybe Isaac Humphreys. I like Humphreys a little bit. I don't know. I just think you got to look at a five that's more versatile than Howard and you've now got to find a two because with Bellinelli gone, you can't rely on Jeremy Lamb to do all the work at the two guard. Yeah, I think definitely Monk or Kennard would be a great fit, and I think the Hornets could possibly be a five or six seed next season in the East. Yeah, I agree. Any last thoughts on either the D'Lo trade or the Howard trade from either of you? I think they're both pretty one-sided. Nets and Hornets win. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't think it's as one-sided like in the Lakers trade. I think that getting, obviously getting rid of Moscow's contract was huge, but I think it's still lost. All right, well, this is the second one of our trade rumors. You might need to put out another one tomorrow if more stuff comes out. But the big stuff tomorrow is our uh, live mock draft coming out tomorrow night. We're going to have 
we're gonna get a podium and go pick by pick we're gonna have team gear for each team it's gonna be definitely a good one pretty exciting pretty funny definitely check that one out as it'll be a great time recording and a great time just in general to watch uh make sure you like uh give us a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more content from the sports sermon we'll keep it going all summer and you'll get up to the minute news here from the sports sermon make sure you follow us on twitter the sports sermon with a z and like and subscribe the video thank you for watching and we will see you tomorrow with the draft